Hello there, welcome to the Bears Hall of Discipline today. We are in Judges, chapter 12, and we're getting along with Jephthah. We're, we're kind of finishing up the story of Jephthah today, and we'll just be getting into the story of probably one of the better known judges, and that is Samson, an Old Testament bodybuilder, if you will, power lifter in the name of God. That's the best way to go. Bible and bodybuilding with a bear, right? He was a bear. He was one of the original bears. So let's get going in Judges chapter 12 here. And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto Jephthah, Wherefore passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon, and didst not call us to go with thee? We will burn thine house upon thee with fire. Sometimes in your life you regret the things that you have said, the things that you've done. And this is one of them for the men of this region. Jephthah had the blessing of God on his life. The Spirit of God came upon him. The Lord Jesus was empowering this man and there are times in your life where you know God is empowering you to do something. And you just accomplish it. And there are other times that you struggle by faith, right? And understand everybody's going to go through both. If you're a child of Jesus Christ and you love him, you're going to experience both struggling through life by faith and being empowered by the spirit of Yahweh as Yeshua emboldens you from the inside out. Because that's the way life is. Sometimes we learn and watch the spirit of God moving mightily, victoriously. And other times, as Job experienced... We go through times we we must walk by faith. As the Spirit of God leads us step by step, corner by corner, fork in the road by fork in the road. Decision upon decision. Should we get this? Should we not get this? Can we make it on this? Those are all decisions of testing by faith, walking the narrow road unto eternity. The men of Ephraim, they're coming up against a man that has been emboldened by the Spirit of Christ Jesus. And he is unstoppable. The things that come out of his mouth so far haven't been too good, but his deeds on behalf of Yahweh, have been unstoppable. Verse 2, And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon, and when I called you to deliver me out of their hand, you did not. So I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them into my hand. Now why do you come this day to fight against me? As if you're going to battle against the Lord? Because as a man of God, a woman of God, one with God is a majority. And you might seek to stumble them. And for a while you might say, oh, we got them down, we got them down, we got them down. But you know what? The day is going to come like Job. 
where his increase is abundant in every possible way. And he goes down in history as a man we remember. I'm going to remember Job my whole life. As with all the apostles and patriarchs of past, all the way back to Adam, the New Testament Christians, the men of faith throughout history that were tested. We remember them because they struggled through by faith. They weren't really experiencing great battle victories. They were struggling by faith in the hope of eternity, by trusting in the Lord. And that hope is a surety. These Ephraimites, they come up against Jephthah, who is all of these things, and he just laid bare his last hope for offspring. We talked about that last time. We don't need to rehash that. He's got nothing else but to give it all for God. And they're going to come up against this guy with their little petty annoyances. They were called to help, but they didn't. So when the victory was happening, then they came and said, why didn't you let us be part of this great victory? And so they start now, they got their own little mini civil war. And Jephthah, he's up to it. Jephthah then gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim, and the men of Gilead smote Ephraim, because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim amongst the Ephraimites and amongst Manassites. And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites, and it was so that when those Ephraimites who had escaped said, Let me go over the river, that the men said unto him, Art thou an Ephraimite? And he says, No. Then said they unto him, Say now, Shibboleth. And he said, Sibboleth. For he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites 42,000. This is kind of like a civil war that happened in our country way back in the 1800s. Brutal. Cousins, uncles fighting against one another. Brutal. I'm not saying right, wrong. There was, they had their reasons. The North had their reasons. South had their reasons. Just brutal. Civil wars are always ugly. And you get involved from the outside is, you know, you're just, you're just getting involved in sibling rivalry, you know. I, I could go back in history and name a few just in modern history that I remember, but I'm not going to stir up open wounds. Just civil war is always brutal. A house divided just can't stand. Anyway, 42,000 of the Ephraimites fell because they came up against Jephthah and the Gileadites. Now we have the swan song epitaph of Jephthah. He judged Israel six years and he died. We don't really know how he died, what he died of. It's just that he died. Now we pass a baton on to the next judge, verse 8. After him, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel, and he had thirty sons and thirty daughters whom he sent abroad and took in thirty daughters from abroad for his sons, and he judged Israel seven years. Now, what kind of men and women did he bring in for his children? 
believers in the God of Israel or are pagans? We don't really get the, the lowdown on that. It just simply says he brought in, you know, husband and wives. They still do that in certain parts of the world. And um, the Orient and Asia, the parents set up marriages for the children. Just the way they do it. It was done in Israel quite a bit. Anyway, Ibzan himself also died and was buried at Bethlehem. After him was Elon, a Zebulonite. He judged Israel ten years. Elon, the Zebulonite, he died and was buried in Agilon in the country of Zebulun. And after him, Abdon, the son of Helil, a Pirithonite. He judged Israel. He had 40 sons and 30 nephews that rode on three score and ten donkeys, and he judged Israel eight years. And Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirithonite, died and was buried in Pirithon in the land of Ephraim in the Mount of the Amalekites. So some of the judges were given the years and, you know, what they accomplished. Maybe they accomplished great things. We don't really know. It's just that... Bible chooses not to declare them to us. Like the miracles of Jesus, the Bible says these are mentioned a few just to give you an understanding, but if all the miracles and things that Jesus did, there is not enough books and volumes in the world to fill them with. Um, so we get the, we just get a, how they say that now, a snippet. We get a little snippet of what happened. Just enough for you to understand the intent that God had for these time periods. Okay, we're moving on. Chapter 13 of Judges. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. That's human nature, isn't it? You pray and you pray, you're in tough times financially, physically, you know, you lose your job, you lost a loved one, you know, your, you know, your vehicles are broken down, you don't have the money to fix them, you've got an illness, you can't, you know, just on and on and on. Your company's going under, whatever. And God comes through and, and rescues the whole situation, and, and you start to get too busy for Christ. Christ is, is an afterthought, an afterburner. Not the priority of your life. And you start going down roads that you shouldn't be on. And once again, you get yourself in trouble. And that's what happened to Israel. Verse 2 of Judges 13. And there was a certain man of Zorah, the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. Now here in, here in this part of the world... Um, we call the Danes of the Northern European, like the big, they have some of the tallest people on earth. But this is a different, these are different Danes, Danites, the tribe of Dan. Zorah, and his name was Manoah, and his wife was barren. Right away you kind of get the, the platform that, like, Hannah and Samuel, Hannah was barren. So she cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm going to let you have my child, my first child, to be a full-time minister for you. If you'll just grant me a child, and boom, it happened. One of the greatest, one of the greatest, you know, pre and post men of the judge area who actually judged the nation of Israel with power and might in the in the word of God. And that was Samuel. He was 
he was the greatest of the judges, in my opinion. Though that doesn't take away, not to, not to take away anything from any of these judges that were mentioned, or even some of the judges that were not mentioned. But Daniel comes through desperation and despair and the failure to have a child. And that day, not having a child, that was a curse to a woman. It was very important. And Hannah said to the Lord, if you'll only give me a child, I will give him back to you. And boom, guess what? She had a child, named him Samuel. And he was a great man of God. Situation here. This man Manoah, his wife was barren. And the angel appears to him and you guessed it. You guessed it, they're going to have a child. He's going to be a long-haired bear. He's going to be a bear in the bear's gym with a with a with a with a ponytail. Cuz they ain't cutting his hair. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine or strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarene unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So he was like one of the Vikings of old, before Vikings, you know, come to really notoriety. He was a long-haired, bodybuilding muscle man in Bible times. He was a man of God. And he had some good decisions and bad decisions, but his intent was, I'm going to serve the Lord. And when the chips were down, that's when he had his greatest victory. That's, that's cool. Uh, the bottom line is, he went out in glory for Christ. So we continue on the story. He was a Nazarite, he was a long haired Viking bear. Then the woman came, said to her husband, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very amazing. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, Thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat an unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Verse 8. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, be let the man of God, which thou didst send, come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, once again was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran, and showed her husband, and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me, and came and he's going to wait for you. A lot of times, if something like that happened, where there's like a heavenly showing or a heavenly, you know, God's coming in, God don't wait around usually. It's for you. It's between you and you and Him, because there's going to be a great divide now, and you're not going to feel that way tomorrow. But this happened to know that God's with you. I'm speaking kind of third person. And those times do happen as a child of Christ, but not all the time. They just, every now and then, just God reaches out, tells you something. Though after that, you may make other stupid decisions, but for that one thing, you know the answer. And you follow through on it. This angel, the angel of the Lord, is going to hang around and wait for because it's very important. If it's very important for the for this supernatural thing to happen so that somebody you love or somebody close to you can see it, God will make it happen again or make it happen for them. But not always, because it's just 
That's the way God moves. But this time, it's very important. So Manoah arose and went with his wife, and they came to the man of God, and said unto him, Art thou the man that speakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. Very important, isn't it? What happened in the time of the burning bush? And Moses said, Who shall I say sent me? Would God answer to him? I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and now what shall we do unto him? How shall we raise him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware, or take caution. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any clean thing, unclean thing. All that I have commanded her, let her observe it and do it. Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a meal of a goat for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread, and if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when these sayings come to pass, how may we honor thee? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou after my name, seeing it is secret? Huh? When an angelic being says, I am, or that my name is secret, Hasten to his spiritual ear to hear deep down in your soul what's being said. It means that God is near. Pay attention and heed. So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord, and the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass when the flame went upward into heaven from off the altar that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar, and Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear unto Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ appearing in bodily form upon earth. He can do that because he's God. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would his at that time have told us about such things as these. In other words, he ain't going to tell these people that you're going to have a child that's a, a, a long-haired Viking bodybuilder for God and the nation of Israel if he was going to kill them. So if God tells you something's going to happen down the road or in this situation, no matter what circumstances are between you and that thing, that thing's going to happen. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move in him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtol. The man was Samson. When you think Samson, hey, I think, I think a spirit-filled, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of guy. It was a long-haired bear toting around some of the law in a little leather book. 
aiming to serve the Lord. He was a wild man. He wasn't a tame one man. He was, he was a man. He was a warrior. God bless him. I look forward to seeing Samson one day as all my other brethren, family, loved ones. And most importantly, to see the Lord Jesus and my Heavenly Father in my flesh. God bless you, friends. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.